It is the rare post game edition of Thompson to Clark. Brad and I are here, and it is uh, Giants Twitter is is not surprisingly <laughs> going crazy after their yeah. loss today. I, you know, it, it's hard to even go to after a win sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do a whole lot. <laughs> so why are we back so quickly? Well, I I, I will tell you. Uh, the death lineup, uh, Brian is kind of uh, in up to his ears in work. And so we were trying to figure out if he can come on today. Uh, our, our, our backup, my buddy Ben Cruz, he is also busy today. So I just reached out to Brad and said, hey, you know, what are you doing after the game for a few minutes? And Brad was available. And also Brad is going to be gone for our normal show next week. So we just figured let's double up this week. We'll We'll miss our normal show next week. But you can catch us on the Bleacher Report app on Thursday. So we'll be back yeah. on Thursday there. And, and I think the theme of that show is overreactions to like the first week of the season, which is which would be perfect for today because, like I said, <laughs> Giants Twitter is kind of going nuts. So oh, overall, what were your thoughts on the opener here? What did you what did you like about the new squad? Well, you know, and home opener, no, not home openers, but season openers are always weird. There's so much pomp and circumstance. There is so much adrenaline. You're looking forward to it as a fan for months and months and months. You slog through uh, an entire month of meaningless spring training games down in Arizona. And then you get here and then it's like, if you win, awesome. If you lose, okay. I mean, it's just kind of the game is over, push it out of the way. All of that happened. Jung Hu Lee got his first hit. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Miller got his first career strikeout. Uh, and then tomorrow is just going to be game two of 162. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I like the squad. Michael Conforto's swing looked much better. Um, Jung Hu Lee, poor guy. I saw him in the post game interview after he got the base hit and then got picked off on the first throw over by you Darvish. When they asked him the question about um, his first hit, yeah, he 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 talked to the interpreter and the interpreter basically said like, you know, as the interpreter started to talk, Jung Hu Lee put his head down. I thought he was going to cry because he was, <laughs> you know, the interpreter said, you know, I didn't get, uh, you know, I didn't get to enjoy it because I got picked off right away. And, you know, he prides himself in fundamental baseball. So getting picked off after a base hit, it's got to be extremely frustrating for him. But again, first game jitters. Yeah. First game playing in the Major League Baseball um, in the United States. And so th those things are going to happen. It's, it is it is what it is. Uh, bullpen blew up, unfortunately, and that was rough to watch um, because that's one of our strengths. But again, if hey, if we win 90 games this year, this is going to happen. This feeling and this is going to happen 71 more times. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just, yeah. that's what we always tell ourselves at the beginning of the season. The longest season of all of the seasons is the Major League Baseball season. Oh yeah, for sure. I thought Logan Webb looked awesome as usual. He struggled yeah. in the one inning where they got the one run off of him. Uh, he, uh, they, they just, they just dinked and dunked him to death. And luckily, the Giants got out of it with only one run, thanks to some great defense. That I mean, if you if you want to talk about infield defense, the infield defense looked tremendous. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the infield defense it was great, except for the throw from Bailey. But again, you're going to have an error here or there, and and it's kind of out of the way. We're, we, and that I mean, was more of a judgment thing for him. Yeah, and Bob Melvin did. You know, Bob Melvin backed him up in the post game and said, "Hey, we're going to throw over there because a guy at third, I think it was Camposano." He's not, I mean, he's a catcher. He's yeah. not going to be necessarily running on the throw down to second. Um, so he said, you know, a different runner, different situation. Maybe we don't make that throw. So mm -hmm. he obviously had the green light to make that throw. And if he comes up and makes a good throw, I think they got him at second too. Uh, yeah. But again, you know, in a tight ball game, do you throw down there? Yeah, I trust Patrick Bailey to do that again. Um, I, I think, and then and then it just completely handcuffed Nick Ahmed, you know, and he had to fall back. And again, part is part of that because of the new rule where he couldn't get on the bag to try to take the throw, and he's standing in front of the bag, so he has to catch it and then make a swipe throw. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. So again, so many things. Game one of one sixty two. So yeah. the the other thing that I liked, you, you talk about Ahmed. I mean, he came up clutch a couple different times with yeah. that. And 
I was having, I was joking with you in in, uh, in chat, and I was saying how you know Giants had two on, no outs, first and second, and Patrick Bailey coming up, and mm-hmm. now Patrick Bailey hits ahead of Nick Ahmed in the order because he's to them he he's a better hitter. So this is kind of how we used to grow up with baseball: is you, you bunt the runner over, you get out of the double play, now you got second and third. But now you're relying on technically your worst hitter, who is not a pitcher, by the way. It, right. it, back in back when we're growing up, you wouldn't do that because the pitcher, you you know, you don't have the pitcher hitting anymore. And Ahmed comes up and he and he hits a he gets a hit and drives in both runs. And I was telling you how you know all the analytics guys had their tweet in the chamber already that they were about <laughs> to blast out when uh, Ahmed struck out and then you know Lee uh, would would pop out or whatever would have whatever would have happened but uh and, and then you know he gets the hit and you're like oh okay that that kind of worked now i don't know how often bob melvin would necessarily do that on a day-to-day basis to kind you know essentially give up your eighth place hitter to get runners in scoring position for your ninth place hitter. But right. it, it worked today in a close game, low scoring game. And it was brilliant. If the bullpen was able to hold uh, the lead, which they were not. And, uh, and yeah, it was just, you know, that kind of stuff game one, you know, kind of stands out a little bit and says, this is the difference between how the giants are doing it in 2024 and how they would have done it in the Kapler era. You know, I'm sure Farhan felt a, a certain way about that. Like, oh, we're, we're bunting, huh? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, but it's, <laughs> it's just a different philosophy. And I was listening to Tim Kawakami talk to Mike Kruko yesterday on the podcast. And, you know, one, one thing he said about Melvin is, you know, Melvin will get in somebody's face, not in like a mean way, but in a, in a way to go like, OK, why did you do this? Like, what was the reasoning? And he said, uh, gosh, who was it? There was somebody. Oh, it was uh, Spexler, our guy, Wade Mech. Yeah. He swung at a 3-0 pitch when they were down in spring training. And last year, that's totally cool, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you, look, you look 2-0, you look 3-0. If you can get a pitch, you can drive. Go for it. Melvin's comment to Meckler was, we actually needed a base runner because we're coming from behind in this game. I would have liked to see you take that pitch because you're not a home run hitter. If you, if you know, if you, if you can j- hit the ball out of the park, that's one thing. Yeah. But, so if you're Solaire, it's probably right. Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, it's that kind of thing where you just know that the culture is a little bit different. The grind is going to be a little bit different. And to some extent, you know, the, the roster is going to be different from how it was, you know, the, the, all of the, lefty versus lefty and righty versus righty. And, you know, no more Jock Peterson who is solely a DH. And then you kind of risk reward with him and you stick him out in left field and just hope that nobody sees him and they don't want to hit it to him until they go, Oh, look who's in left field. (laughs) He's going to hit it over there all the the time. So, you know, there is a different feel. Now I think what giants Twitter is kind of going a little overboard on in overreacting, you know, like, like, Twitter yeah. is want to do. You know, Twitter, yeah, that's okay. Twitter, Twitter wasn't designed for people to be patient, by the way. That, that's not uh, why Twitter was designed. No. But no. you know, the, the 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 thought is like, okay, we we made these changes, we have new philosophy, new you know, new manager, uh Farhan Farhan stocked up, you know, the roster a little bit, and you know, where do we go? And it's like, oh, same, you know, same result. And I get that, you know, game one, but we did see some things that were much different than we would have seen in the last few years. And I'm not even saying one way works better than the other because the Giants won 107 games playing baseball, the Kapler and Zaidi way. So it's just it's just uh, this is something that I think we're going to be keeping an eye on. You know, we're going to say, yeah. oh, that would have never happened under the Kapler way. And then there's going to be moments where. Bob Melvin has guys bunt and they pop into a double play. People are going to go, Oh, why are we bunting? Like there's going to be a lot of those moments too. So I'm, I'm just very interested to see that from a day-to-day basis. Uh, you know, I liked it again. You had uh web go a hundred pitches and, and then it, like I said, you saw the bunt and you saw base hit run getting driven in. Um, 
it just kind of feels a little more back to a mix of analytics. Sure, you're going to use some matchups. You're going to use some favorites uh, in, in looking at numbers. But you're also going to get that feel. And like you said, going back to the thing about um, Bob Melvin, uh, Chapman did say in an interview, he said, you know, uh, Bob Melvin will ride you a little bit. And, and he knows what buttons to push. And he'll learn you. And he'll know what buttons to push. And he said, he pushes my buttons all the time and in a good way when I need it. So you're going to have a manager that's a lot more hands-on. And, and like you said, too, 3-0 swinging on three Oh last year, that would have been fine. I think last year, a lot of things were fine. Mm -hmm. Um, because we, as we found out th the players were just kind of running the show Yeah, and, and it was, you know, whatever they, de they decided to do, it didn't have to be, you know, consensus or come from the top. It was just kind of like, Hey, we're, we're going to do this and, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, and they were kind of, I, I wouldn't say getting away with things. I mean, they're still winning ball games. They, you know, finished what five games, six games under 500. So, um, some things were going right. Um, but I think this year you will absolutely see, and that's a good example of accountability and, and you'll be ready to play baseball and you're going to know your role and you're going to know your situation. And I think guys are really going to respect that this season. Um, yeah. I mean, the Giants score four runs, um, one home run, a solo home run from Conforto. Conforto had um, two, two extra base hits today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's fantastic to see because we're going to need, we're going to need everybody up and down the lineup. And, and uh, you know, it was weird seeing Tyro batting sixth, but, but that shows you the length of the lineup this year versus him batting second and being like, you know, a month into the season, we go, this is our best hitter. And he's batting second. And after that, it's kind of like, mm, and then Wil Wilmer Flores turned it on um, after that. And I think um, JD Davis had a good, you know, first month of the season, but then that was it. So when you look at the lineup up and down, you go, Oh, okay. And even uh, Jorge Soler, when he just missed a pitch, uh, and it looked kind of looked like a, la a lazy fly ball. It was hit probably like 20 feet from the <laughs> fence. And I thought, man, this guy is yoked. That's the one thing that I would have changed in the lineup is putting Tyro number two behind Lee. I still like that. Yeah. And then you can, you have Solaire hitting four and then you push Chapman down one spot and have him hitting five. Uh, I I'm sure that the reason why they, they did that is because they liked the, Lefty righty, lefty righty, lefty yeah. righty, lefty yeah. switch righty. Like I'm sure they loved that, but at the same time, you know, I, I think having Estrada on uh, behind Lee, two guys who, you know, Estrada has a little bit of pop. Lee mm -hmm. maybe not as much, but two guys who theoretically should be table setters and getting on base. And I know the other, you know the analytic way is like, you want your number two hitter to be your best hitter. Well, Tyro Estrada was kind of like our best hitter last year for a good chunk of the season. So he, yeah. you know, he has the ability to, to be a, a very valuable hitter and he runs a little bit as well, which is the other thing is Soler. If he, if he gets on base, you know, he's going to be in front of guys who should be able to hit him in, but he's, he's not a fast guy himself. You know, he's probably an average right. speed guy. So it's a it's interesting to see how they will tinker with that lineup. Uh, and then, you know, it'll be different when a lefty is on the mound, I'm sure. And we'll see a lot of that with what Melvin and uh, Matt Williams wants to do. You know, we were all, we were also joking about how when Bailey bunted, uh, and, and we said, wow, you know, the only time we ever saw bunt was a poor, uh, Dubon when the giants were up by 20 <laughs> runs against San Diego and yeah, exactly. Matt Williams wanted to go over and strangle him and like, <laughs> and put him in a chokehold. He was so mad. Yeah. And Matt Melvin was pissed off too. So, right. You know, and we were kind of joking about it because we were riding the high of the Kapler era and just the change in, in the way things were going. And we wanted to embrace it. And, and, you know, we made our reasons, you know, oh, why it's not a bad thing. And, you know, but I think at heart, our instincts, and we even said this on that show a few years ago, our instinct is that that is probably Bush League, but maybe the game has changed so much to where, you know, a lot of those old adages and those old rules kind of die. But I don't think they die with Bob Melvin and Matt Williams being in that dugout. I don't, I think they're, it's it's sort of alive again. We're gonna see guys, you know, who show you up, and they may get one in the in the backside. You know that kind of team yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. And they, yeah, a little bit more old school 
Um, and I'm looking forward to that. I, and as soon as we hired Bob Melvin, I thought, okay, cool. We're going to get back to uh, a little bit more baseball that we're kind of used to growing up. And that's good because I, I mean, I liked Kapler. He had his moments and everything, yeah. but obviously as you saw last season, um, I hate to use this word cause it kind of sounds, you know, it, it kind of sounds mean, but, but honestly it was getting tired mm -hmm. and, and, and obviously it was because by the end of the season, the players, they didn't necessarily quit on him because we had players that still, I mean, maybe one or two guys, but we have players on this team that played for him last year that, uh, you know, play their hearts out and, yeah. and no matter what the situation, and I'm talking about guys like Yaz and Slater and, um, you know, Patrick Bailey and everybody else. And again, the fighting for spots and everything else. But yeah, I, I think everything just kind of got tired last season. Um, and to let him go with just three games left in the season was completely understandable. Uh, and, he, yeah, and here's, here's the know. thing. And I haven't really, you know, I've seen a little bit about it, mm -hmm. but baseball, uh, more so than basketball, it's so hard. It's, so, it's much harder to get into free agency in baseball than in the other sports because of the way that uh, arbitration works and, and, you know, how many years you, you, you know, you get a guy when you sign him or when you draft him and the giants roster was very much built to be sort of like a uh, here today, gone tomorrow roster, right? Yeah. Signed these guys to one year contracts, opt outs. And so, when you have a guy like Yaz, who has been here from the pre Zadie, I guess not the pre Zadie, but the pre cap. Uh, no, actually, they came in at the same year. So, but, uh, but, you know, he's been here for a little while. He's not signed to a one year opt out deal. He is still arbitration. So he's going to be here for as long as they want him to be. And for someone like Slater, too, same thing. Uh, someone like Webb, same thing. And to see a roster in which a lot of guys are playing for their next contract, like Jock, until the Giants tagged him that one year, I could see how Kapler's sort of like player freedom style, uh, how it m would mix up the expectations, right? Because if you're someone like Yaz and you know that you've been here already for a few years, you know that you're going to be here unless you get traded – and you see somebody who you're like, this guy's probably not even going to be around past this year. And we're near the end of the season. And maybe you start questioning effort from guys, right? Maybe you start yeah. wondering, oh, is this guy playing for the team or is he playing for his contract? Is it both? What's going on? And we heard that at the end of the year where, you know, these guys were kind of frustrated with how maybe loose the clubhouse was when they were not playing as well. So that stuff is also going to be interesting. I have a feeling that Melvin himself, and this may even be why I don't even think Melvin projects that he's going to be around for, you know, more than, a, more than whatever he signed for. And maybe, maybe this is sort of Matt Williams's job in waiting, but That's I true. have, I have a feeling that, you know, Melvin is going to make sure that those specific things that happen at the end of last year don't happen. Now, at the end of the day, it's really about the talent and 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 some of that stuff, you know, could could possibly mean little things as, as you get towards the end of the season. But do but but is a frustrated clubhouse worth five losses or is a great clubhouse worth five wins? Probably not, but at least you know, on the fringe, maybe it's worth a win or two. And and if you are sure. in that wild card race, that that may be the reason to make the wild card or to not make the wild card. So I, I that's another thing, you know, with Melvin and uh, Kruko, again, going back to Kruko, he said when he was uh, in the in the mid 80s, when the Giants were um, brought up Bob Melvin, he said Roger Craig had told Kruko that Bob Melvin was going to be a major league manager. And the reason why he knew that is because Bob Melvin would not only just ask questions, but he needed to know the why of whatever was going on. Like it wasn't just about the result. It was like, okay, why did we do it this way? And so Roger Craig was like, yeah, this guy is, has base, you know, has manager written all over him. And the Giants are going to be have to be accountable. I do wonder if 
you know, some of the guys who were here during the, the Kapler era, who were kind of the dandies of the Kapler era, that, that you know, that's a little bit of a, a difference for them. And uh, we'll see the results of that. But uh, yeah, you know, I, that that's the thing that I'm, I'm looking forward to following, at least in this in the beginning when, you know, who knows how good this team's really going to be on paper. We expect yeah. them to be better, but they still got to go out there on the field and, uh, and play baseball. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, one loss on opening day does not define a team. So stay off of Twitter, stay off of the social media, <laughs> do the eye test, see what you saw and, and digest that. And, and for me personally, I know going ahead, this is a team that can win series after series after series. If they really, you know, play the way they did today, minus one error. And, and again, they got blooped and and dunked and dinked to death uh, especially luke jackson before he tweaked his back and had to come out i mean all that stuff was just dropping in and then ryan walker served one up right over the middle of the plate and, and you know so stuff like that it's not going to happen every single day uh and if it does those guys won't be in there so that that's yeah. the whole thing too They're it, not gonna it have does trust it does look like jackson may have tweaked his back or something so yeah, i think he's he going to get an mri it doesn't sound like it's like a super serious thing because you know Dwayne. i think it's Dwayne kuiper reminded us that he had tommy john surgery he's like oh no <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> terrible but well, he did say luke jackson did say in the post game he said last time so this happened last year after 10 uh outings uh after the tommy john and he came back uh same thing happened to his back and he said that was like five or six days where his wife had to help him out of bed. Ooh, and and tough. we know that feeling. I mean, oh, we're, yeah. we're older guys, so we know that feeling. Back but he spa said, Have you ever had a back spasm? Like, Oh God. Yeah. No, my goodness. Ever. This is yeah. like the most painful yeah. thing that I, you know, that I've had to deal with that just exist. Now, you yeah. know, mothers are saying like, come on, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, yeah. I've, I've, yeah, I've had them to the point where, you know, I, I oh god it just happened let's see i had like five days off during the christmas break and the first morning of the five days i woke up with a massive back spasm oh so the whole first day of the christmas break i had to lay off and on ice uh take massive amounts of motrin yeah uh, and everything else but yeah but he said he was able to walk off the mound this time which he That's said good. last time he thought he was gonna have to get carried off so he said it feels like a spasm and he was standing at his locker doing the post game so i mean that that's a good sign so maybe it's a two-day knock it out heat ice heat ice heat ice massage i mean these guys have professional massagers who can come in and take care of them you and i don't have that we have an ice pack and a Motrin. That's what we got. Exactly. <laughs> um, so they go tomorrow, Friday, uh, 640 start. We get to see Kyle Harrison. Yes. You know, with with a Exciting. few starts under his belt from last year. So he, he faces Musgrove. Then the Giants uh, play Saturday early. Uh, actually, not a night game. It's like a late afternoon, early evening game. And it's uh, Hicks against Dylan Cease. And then Sunday, Giants are TBD for Sunday. So we'll see who ends up being the right. starter there. Uh, and then they have three with L.A. starting on April 1st and uh, all night games. And then they have a day off. And then next Friday is the home opener, 1.35 p.m. So... Uh, yeah, that right out of the gate, you get San Diego and you get the Dodgers. If you are not up to speed, you know, that's those are seven tough games. So the yeah. Giants need to, you know, they need they need to kind of put this one behind them and and play as good as they did today and maybe get some of those runners moved over that they did not do early in the game. And you know what? You know, what one of the guys who played at least at the at the plate played a little poorly was uh baby yaz the yasmanian devil he yeah, had four he had at bats and that, yeah. three strikeouts but his excuse is he's got his family on his mind i think after oh, today yeah. he's uh i think he's leaving he's going on uh paternity leave and his wife is going to get induced so uh, did they say if matos was going to be the one who's coming up or who's i would assume 
I would assume because I think Susan Slusser had asked Bob Melvin about it, and he kind of hinted at the fact that Luis Matos will, will probably be waiting in the wings. Marco Luciano, he did say this morning that he needed more time at shortstop defensively mm -hmm. um, before he comes back up again. Uh, so those were the two notes that I saw from Susan Slusser. So, yeah, I, I would think um, – Luis Matos is going to be the guy to take that spot. I think, yeah, I think they're inducing Yaz had said um, on the microphone the other night, I think when he, when they were in San Francisco, he had said that they're inducing her tomorrow, Friday. So, yeah. Um, so he'll be back probably by Monday, I would imagine. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, that, that, that's the early, the early uh, roster situation with the team. I, I, I put up some polls on, uh, on our Twitter page before the, you know, early this morning, just to see what, how people were feeling about the team. Uh, the first one that I did was, um, uh, who, you know, wh what is the ceiling for this squad? Is it wild card winner, division winner, NL champs, World Series winner? And the majority of the people think that the the world the wild card is is kind of the the ceiling, and I think that's a realistic view. Now in 2010, what would our answer have been in you know in the same question? <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh Grant Brisby had an awesome article about just kind of like expectation and preseason and and you know outlook and everything. And he was like, Yeah, 2010, man, was not was not great. Like uh the uh you know, all the prognosticators, you know, had the Giants winning like or you, you know 80 games or whatever and and so <laughs> you know that that i think that's an interesting thing to think about i think we we yeah. try to be realistic uh, but really when when you're there when you just get into the playoffs then it's you just go for it look at last year look at the diamondbacks i think uh grant said last year the diamondbacks were like five games behind the giants in the wild card race i, I don't remember the time frame and then they just went on a run and then they end up in the world series so that's Kind of, yeah. you know, if you're if you are not the Braves or the Dodgers, that may be how you do it, right? In in 2024. Yeah, I mean, the you know the the trade deadline is going to be huge this year for teams that are in it because you do have a lot of free agents next season. So a lot of big name free agents next season. I mean, does Juan Soto get traded again if the Yankees are out of it? I mean, that's yeah. that's a that's a big question. Um, yeah, there's so many players that can be grabbed. So, and like the Phillies did a couple of years ago, and then and All Star break, they were just hanging in there, and everybody thought, "What are they doing? They're making a ton of moves." And then they go to the World Series. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that, and that's what Major League Baseball wanted to do by opening it up and giving you one more wild card spot. Yes. They wanted to make it crazy, make it wacky, give a lot of people shots, and and and, that's what and done, so. you know, make the trade deadline a little more interesting as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Got a lot uh, of movement. And then, you know, it, of course, Dodger fans hate it because in a team like the Diamondbacks get in and beat you up, a team like the Padres get in and beat you up, you know, back-to-back yeah. -back years. So, uh, oh, well, we love F it. Fix your pitching, guys. <laughs> That's right, man. Um, so I also asked the question, who leads the Giants in home runs this year? Uh, and the two choices were Solaire or anyone else on the team. <laughs> and Solaire uh, is leading that voting with 76%. And then the last one, this was the most interesting one, I thought. Who finishes higher in the Cy Young Award race for the National League? Logan Webb, Blake Snell. It is almost 50-50 at this point. So hmm, people have high expectations for both guys, which is really cool. I like it. Um, so, hey, look, you know, we were just talking about overreaction. Greg, Greg's Greg's <laughs> frustrated. There we go. The bullpen sucks and the lineup suck too. And and look, I understand. I watched that game and the negativity wanted to overwhelm me when uh I forget who's the left-handed hitter that that hit the the ball past Yaz in, in right field for the double. I was like, I was ready to throw my hat in the air, go, okay, <laughs> this is all but Again, then you go, okay, it's it's game one. This, yeah, you know, we're seeing good things here. Uh well, so, and, to, and to see them fight back a little bit too, that was kind of um yeah, you know, that, that was kind of I mean it's fun to watch because yeah. again, you know, this team we get to see that this team's gonna have some fight. Again, game one, 
We don't know it yet, 100%. But the but the bench is deeper now. You got Wilmer Flores on the bench. Um, it, you know, that's going to help out in, in the long run. And uh, Tyler Fitzgerald could get out there, run some bases. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's your boy, PK Man OG says, you know, do we do a post-game uh, at post post game or game now? No, we don't. This is no. we, our show's the weekly show. If we have the opportunity to do it now, if the Giants go to the playoffs, That's we different. will we will do more of sort of the post game shows depending on our schedule because you know yeah. And the year they did um, in twenty twenty one, we did we did post games after every um, playoff game. We only you, had five. That's you awesome. almost you almost puked. Remember, you had that crazy I almost, migraine. Yeah, I almost died. I think it was it was the day we drove back from Disneyland. Just got home, turned on the game. I think I was massively dehydrated. Then I started drinking beers while watching <laughs> the game because I was nervous because it was game five. And then we go on to to do the show, and this migraine hit. Yeah, and I'm sweating my my head off, man. And uh, yeah, that was a rough one. Thanks for being here. It's your boy PK man. OG said he subbed to our channel. Thanks, Thank buddy. you very much. We really appreciate that. Uh, we, you know, we, we are locked in. We, we are, we're going to have a lot of fun this season. I believe the, there's more optimism with this team than there was last year for 100%. I can feel that. So uh, that's, yeah. uh, that, that's going to be at least early on. I think it's going to be a positive thing. Okay. Before we get yeah. out of here, I, t- I oh, and you, Brad- you, you, you have a drink. I don't ha- I didn't get a drink. I have too many things to do today after yeah. work. I, 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 work so. I grabbed the, uh, the Jack Daniels you. and Coke zero mixed in, you know, I'm well, pretty much done yeah. with work. I'm going to make dinner soon. So I was like, ah, they, you know, I, I would have had a reason to drink if they would have won as well, but that was my excuse <laughs> to grab since how they lost. I need to get a drink. Yeah. Um, but uh, one just real quick, I just wanted to go through the uh, the roster here. Yeah. Opening day. Roster. So, uh, you know, no, no Matos, like we said, no Luciano, right. like we said as well. But Joey, we'll probably see Matos tomorrow. That's kind of how it's sounding. Yeah. We did see uh, Joey Bart make the roster, and it sounds like what they're going to try to do is they're going to wait for everybody's roster to be set, and they're going to see if they could sneak him through waivers. Um, At the same time, maybe teams understand this strategy, and maybe there are a handful of teams who would grab Joey Bart off the waivers and that creates a trade opportunity for the Giants. But, uh, you know, if if Joey Bart ends up in triple a and continues to play in triple a and maybe Murphy or Bailey gets hurt, then he sees himself back on the roster and, you know, then he can sort of rejuvenate. But I think it's probably more likely that he's going to be on a different team. Uh, and that is, but that is why he is on the roster. That is why they are carrying three catchers. So, Right. Um, and and Joey Bart is such a nice luxury to have in triple A in case something happens to Murphy or Bailey. Um, but that that's a that's a video game luxury. Like you got to think about the fact that this is a human being who is the number one pick overall psychologically wants to be the catcher for the San Francisco Giants has struggled mightily at the plate. Good, good defensively, not fantastic, but good defensively. So it's nice to have that experience waiting in the wings in AAA just in case something goes wrong. Um, but because right now it would be Sable. So if Bard is gone, your backup catcher is going to be Blake Sable, um, which makes me a little nervous because he, you know, he had a tough time behind the plate last year, but he still has time to hone those skills. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice if we can hang on to Bard, but I, but I completely understand the situation as a, as a human being from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. More than likely they are going to have to make a move with Luke Jackson, unless they think it's like a two day thing. If it's any longer than that, I imagine they put him on the IL and uh, they'll, they'll figure out the roster spot there. Um, And then the moves that they had to make Ahmed and Landon Roop were put on the 40 man. Eric Miller uh, made the team left-handed pitcher. He pitched the last inning today. Ethan Small, who you had on your original roster, and you did not know that his right oblique uh, was was hurting, 
He went to the 60 day, which opened up a roster spot. You know, I went to the doctor today for an oblique situation. Oh, no. I was I've, 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 I've had this little twinge in what I thought was my oblique for about the last three years. Not it. it the, the pain is kind of dull and it's not consistent. And so yeah. I finally was like, ah, just, you know, I've actually been doing a lot of yoga lately. So that seems to have pretty much resolved it. But I asked the sports doc, I was like, is this an oblique? And she's like, mm, it's probably more your uh, l- lum- uh, the LS, the lumbar spine, lumbar. Oh, yeah. Something yeah. something back there near the oblique, but not exactly the oblique. So, Ethan Small, I feel your pain. Uh, yeah. You're probably half my age, so hopefully it doesn't affect but, but, you. It doesn't last three years like it lasted for me. <laughs> now, he did it pitching. You probably did it sneezing. So oh, there, sit, I mean... sit, sitting at a desk. That's one of the ways that you do it. You sit on your chair for long right. periods. Time. i'm feeling it today i've i've i had a lot of work today and i'm absolutely feeling it today so yes i know i know what you mean <laughs> all right alex cobb uh retroactive dl to march 25th so that will sort of leave him available uh mid april same with sean jelly uh same thing 15 day dl retroactive to march 25th uh like we said lucian luciano and matos to triple a sack i want to i still want to get out to a game out there i'm going to try and figure out if i can make that work uh uh uh, dalton jeffries down to triple a and then pablo sandoval released Uh, what do you think last thing what do you think about pablo does he do do the giants find a spot for him on that triple a team do they just say hey man you know we're gonna have a pablo sandoval day at the park one day in the future with a bobblehead we're gonna celebrate you like because he's clearly still wants to play i don't oh, know he said straight up in the post game the other day he's not retired he said i'm not retired so um and, and he's open to sacramento but he said they, he hasn't had those discussions and now that he's been released it's I don't know, man. The, the Giants have so many young players that need at bats and mm-hmm. they need reps in the field. I can't see it at this point because you've got, especially if you're talking third base, if you're talking for first base, the Giants need reps for those types of players because Chapman's going to be gone probably after the end of the season. Um, Lamont Wade Jr., He's a good first baseman, but if somebody else comes along who's mashing the ball um, at first base and can be popped in there, you know, getting the reps down in AAA is kind of going to be the key. Yeah. Uh, and then McCarthy, right? I think the Giants have McCarthy, who's um, uh, a, a good first baseman, uh, needs to kind of show a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's just too many guys, too many young guys that need reps, so I don't. I don't see him being there. I'd like to, I'd like it to happen, but I don't think it's going to. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so that is where we stand. And like we said, got some big games coming up this week as I mean, as big of games as you can have early yeah. in the season, you know, you, the, the Dodgers series, I'm sure the giants will circle that and they'll, uh, you know, make those games mean, you know, more so than, than, than they mean right now. But Look, that's that's ha- those are the teams that you're going to have to beat. If the Giants want to make that wild card run that we do believe is going to happen, you're going to have to win some of these games. So uh, the, they'll have to do it with a, a not a full five man rotation quite yet. And last, I guess the last thing to ask you is when do you expect Blake Snell to throw? I would love to see him in that Dodger series. I think he's supposed to throw tomorrow. And then after throwing tomorrow, he's going to let them know where he's at. So there is that possibility we see him in the Dodger series, but I think almost everything is kind of pointing to the possibility of the home opener. On that would be nice. Thursday. That would be, yeah, so, that would be yeah. the best, best, second best, I, I would say. Home yeah. Opener would be nice. Absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, do you want to see him go against the Dodgers already? He's a five inning guy. So yeah. in 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 early April, um, missed all of spring training, two, three innings out of him. I don't know, man. I, I think I'd rather save him for the home opener and kind of piece together some some other pitchers at that point. So because then, then you're going on off of a day off. So you yeah. have some pressure arms. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All righty. 
like uh, like it's your boy PK Man OG said, it would be nice to see him throw his uh, against his former team. That that, that yeah. would be nice. Uh, but sure. okay, so shorter show, but we just wanted to do something uh, to make sure that we had another show this week in the BSPN feed. I believe Roderick and I are talking about doing We Want Winners. Maybe not this weekend, but maybe next weekend. Brian will hopefully be a little bit more clear in his schedule as the Warriors sadly try and make the last playoff spot. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you go Fighting. from you go from like the ultimate team to being a team who's going to fight for the last uh playoff spot in the west it's rough hey it's rough yeah. these guys get old you know we, we saw some great basketball uh and then uh when you come down in july mm-hmm. i think it's gonna be really fun because brian jj me you your kids your wife and i'm gonna try and get rod out there we may have the yeah, entire bspn podcasting crew out at the giants game rod is an a's fan but that's okay He's welcome. Yeah, he's welcome. <laughs> and, and and I told him he doesn't have to buy a Giants hat. He does not. Okay. He can wear. Uh, you know what? Have him wear all A's gear. That's or, be, or he maybe proud, maybe man. just wears his Niners stuff. There you go. Just be proud. Be proud of the team that you follow, man. I'll wear yeah. Giants stuff anywhere. I don't really care. I wore it too. I got my blood drop. Speaking of being old, I got my cholesterol <laughs> checked this morning, and uh, I walked in Giants hat, Giants sweatshirt, and and the girl goes, "Oh, you're an SF fan." And I'm like, she didn't say giant. So I'm like, can't get in too big of a conversation here. But I was like, yeah, it's opening day. She goes, oh, I didn't know that. I was like, yeah, so, hey, well, she tried. She's trying she to make tried, a conversation. Yeah. She said yeah. her aunt, though, goes to every giant's opening day. Oh, wow. Uh, since she can remember. But her aunt had surgery. Um, I'm telling you way more about this person than I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, her aunt had surgery. And so she's missing the. the ah, day because she can't bummer. get down there. So the bummer. anyways. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everybody for checking in with us post game giant start season. Oh, and one, but you know, there, there were some nice things that happened as well. So uh, we'll, we'll be back. Brad, Brad will be back uh, in, you know, he's going to go away for vacation. So it'll be a little bit until we do our show again, but we will be on bleacher report on yeah. Thursday. So check out their app. If you want to watch us, we're going to do a half an hour. there talking about overreactions of the first few games of the season so for brad i am double g we will see you when we see you peace out peace